um, this might be somewhat tricky, right? Because uh, when you first define this key's clothing, and if it was not worn before, then it is clean. However, once it is worn, then it is uh, always dirty. Even though you, you clean this dress, it remains dirty, right? So this might be somewhat confusing uh, to implement. So let's see how we can implement this part. Uh, first, we need to define a class variable, size as small. And one um, trick to implement this part is um, self dot is clean follows its fair um, its is clean variable. So once it becomes dirty, then it stays dirty. However, when it was first clean, then it is clean, right? So this is one trick to implement this clean method, all right? Okay. And let's get back to what we talked about. Uh, when you implement this, um, each method, you sometimes want to use uh, the methods from the base class, all right? So if that is the case, we can use the super. This one indicates the parent class or instance, parent class. And what we can do is if food Let's say if food is type meat, then we want to say, I do not eat meat because rabbit does not eat meat. In other cases, it wants to do the normal eat of super. In the case, we just call this super parenthesis and then call this eat method, okay? And this will call the parents eat method, all right? So this is how you use uh, the parents met method for in ch children's method. And another very useful usage of super is when you are defining initiator. because you sometimes want to define specific variables for this rabbit, like speed, then rather than uh, doing this, this one is already here. So you might don't wanna use this redundant code. In that case, what we can do is using this super dot init and the pass name and age. And it will do what we want to do. And you don't have to pass self here. It will automatically bind to this super. So you don't have to pass self when you call this. This should be init like this. Okay, so this will do basically this part and you don't have to repeat the same code in the child class. All right, so that was about um, using parents method in child, children's uh, method. And you can also uh, inherit multiple classes Uh, by the way, uh, the time is up, uh, but I will keep going on. So if you can stay, you can stay here until the end of this class. But if you have other classes, you can leave now. And before I finish this class, I want to make an announcement. Uh, recitations will start 
from 9 p.m. from today, okay? So from today, recitation starts from 9 p.m., all right? So if you have other classes, you can leave now. And if you wanna stay here, you can stay here. All right, let's talk about multiple inheritance. I think I will do like 10 more minutes. So rather than um, inheriting one class, one parent class, we can inherit multiple classes at the same time. Let's say we have uh, class child and parent, you can just pass multiple parent class name here like this. And we can define different uh, methods. And you might be wondering, what if uh, we want to find some functions or methods from this child class? Uh, let's say, so we have class animal and class predator that inherits animal. Let's say we have class prey. And let's say we have class herbivore. Let's say we have class carnivore. And they all have different eat. And let's say we have implemented rabbit following prey and herbivore. and we do not implement any method here. And let's say when we initiate a rabbit here and then call r.eat, what eat are going to be called? So the rule is like this. Uh, Python tries to find this eat method within the child implementation. And if it is not there, it tries to find eat from this prey first. Okay, parent one first. And if it's not there, then it goes to the next part and tries to find eat from herbivore, all right? So that is the rule. So this is how we implement multiple inheritance. And the last thing I want to mention is we have some special methods for classes. As you can see here, this init method has a very special form, two underbars in front and at the end, all right? So there are other special methods in Python. So the first thing is, um, This fraction, uh, using this fraction, I'll describe uh, what a special function is, method is. So here we're going to have a look at stir method. Uh, so when you run this, yeah, float dot double underbar, double underbar, and one third, it prints out. Zero point three three three, so it converts this number into float, and this is represented as a string. 
And when you call fraction, plus third and one half, it is going to print out this one, right? So sometimes you want to print this rabbit here, okay? Then you need to define how this print function is going to print our in instances. That's by implementing this third method, all right? So you need to set some rules how you are going to print this rabbit instance. So there is a special function called double underbar stir. So there are many special methods, predefined special methods for Python. And I'll leave the link to the full list of these special methods and you can have a look.